Welcome back to JTMJ Crafts. How's it going? How's your day? I hope it's great. My day has been really good now that the DP thon is over. And I'm going to touch base on that here briefly. So during the DP thon, while everybody was enjoying it, I was catching slack f for it. D don't know why I, who was not involved in the DPathon this go around was getting slack. So I have this woman, I'm calling her the trash princess. She keeps talking trash to me and she's talking so much trash that she don't have her facts straight. Now, before I go any further, I want to say this does not this is not being pointed to anybody who put the DP thon DP a thon together. You guys worked your tails off. Bravo. This is going out to somebody who is a peon and isn't involved in the community. I've never seen her a day in my life of YouTube, but she feels like she has to trash talk me. So I'm gonna read off a couple topics because Everybody's been asking me questions since I've put in my community post yesterday that I wasn't doing a live or I wasn't doing a video because I had a rant video blowing this trash princess up and then I was like, you know what? I'm a better person and a bigger person than that. I ain't falling for this. But I also am the type of person, if I don't say something and get it off my chest, it's just going to eat at me. And eat at me until I can't take it no more. So I'm not going to bash her. She's done and over with. She's been blocked on everything that I can block her on to get a hold of me in. So luckily the trash has taken itself out. So like two weeks ago she told me that I can't join the DP Thon because I have too many subs. Okay, whatever. And then she tells me that I ruined the DP Thon schedule because I backed out of my time slot. I never had a time slot, and the DPathon schedule ruined itself when it tried piggybacking off of other creators' lives on Friday. And I didn't support any of my DP friends, which is oh, a bunch of crap, because you can ask any of my DP friends. I was in a lot, I mean a lot of live streams. I stayed up until four, 3 o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning, to make sure I was in Sister Addictions live. Plus I stayed up until 3 o'clock Saturday night, I think it was Saturday night, maybe it was Sunday night, Saturday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday. They all kind of mixed together, I don't know, to make Marissa's so I could show support. So. I, where do you get off saying I never showed support to anybody? I have no freaking clue. And then the last thing I have to say about this is the next time the Diamond Painting Marathon comes around, I'm not backing out of my time slot that I go live for the DP Marathon. I don't care no more. If you don't like it, that's fine. Eat a rotten egg because I'm a creator, and if I want to go live, I'm going to go live. I've already been nice, and I've backed out of it twice. I've been nothing but respectful to everybody here on YouTube, besides a couple people that I don't like, and I don't hang out with, and I don't support their channel. And, you know, it is what it is. But I've been nothing but respectful to everybody. So how she comes off saying all this trash about me, I don't know. But let's... Throw the trash in the trash because the trash princess has left the building and I feel like a whole weight has been taken off of my chest. So let's get into this video and make this or finish this bracelet. Yes, let's finish it. I gotta find the pattern that I was I'm working on. Just a second, just a second. Yes, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Okay, so I'm on. Dum dum dum. Dum 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 dum. -dum. Okay, I know where I'm at. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting so many messages 
telling me, I'm sorry somebody's being a jerk, I'm sorry that you're putting up with bullshit. It just tells me right there that somebody's just trying to play some bullcorn on me, and that's all there is to it. And, and I do feel very loved from everybody telling me this. But I wanted to share with you guys, I did add two new touches to the beaded loom because I kept laying my needle down and having to pick it up off my glass table here. So I added a magnet here and a magnet here. It has helped tremendously because I did one row. Oh my lord, it has helped tremendously. So... Let me look at this again to make sure I know where I'm at. Okay, so I've done three and four. Okay, I need another one just like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to work on this up. I have some things to talk about. I was asked to talk about how I have became a pastry chef. So, there's lots and lots and lots to talk about during, for that. Whew, man. I seriously feel like a weight has just been taken off of my chest. I've, I've seriously put up with that all weekend long and held... Held it to myself all weekend long. So anyways, enough of the, the, the trash. Let's put this like this so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, I need, I need, I guess the squirrel I can hold it up there. So, how I became a pastry chef is... When I was a kid, my mama... Oh, shoot. I already messed up. Okay, I got it fixed. <clears throat> Luckily, I caught it before I got extremely far. So, I was asked to talk about how I became a pastry chef. So, when I was like six years old, seven, maybe seven, I, I started hanging out a lot with my mom. In the kitchen because my mom was a stay-at-home mom and I was a mama's boy I always wanted to be around my mom so she started teaching me how to cook at a very very young age okay so I got one two and I need three and so Oh, I need this color now. I'm going to find something. Hold on, let me find something that's proper. Okay. I got my camo box with all my washi tape. Blocking it up. Gonna block it up. And we need three teal color beads. So, at a very young age, my mama taught me, started teaching me how to cook. And I've been in the kitchen since I was like knee high to a grasshopper. I mean, my mom used to put me up on the chair and, and used to teach me, like, walk me through how to do things. And then when I got to about eight, she started teaching me how to do pastries and cakes and uh, making homemade donuts and eclairs and cream horns and like all kinds of just goodies you know and that's when my passion like really started kicking in okay so I need three and my mama always asked me what do you want to be when you grow up and I kept telling her I want to be a cook I want to be a pastry chef I want to be a cook I want to do something so one day she was like, okay, if you want to do that, you can. I ain't going to stop you from doing it. But 
you're gonna cook dinner two nights out of the week so you can get practice. And I was like, for real? My mom was like, yeah, I'll be there to help you with anything you need help with. And I was like, heck yeah, that's awesome. So I started cooking a couple of nights throughout the week for the family. What? Oh, shoot. I picked up reds instead of picking up teals. Like a dork trapper. I don't have nothing. These are beads, Bobo. I was supposed to pick up teals and I picked up reds. Anyways, so I started cooking for the family and my dad was a very simple, simple guy. He liked Mexican food two, three times a day or a week. So I not always liked Mexican food. I mean, I, I like Mexican food, but... I've not always been, like, this huge fan of Mexican food when I was younger, especially, because it was just, I don't know. My my dad grew up next door to, to a Mexican family, so he was... Oh, sh... Okay, I had to fix that because <laughs> for some reason I screwed it up again. Anyways, I, I'm, I'm squirreling away over here. So, I started cooking more and more for the family. And when I went into high school, I was, I was a pretty good cook. And I could bake pretty good. So then, my mom was like, well, since you love cooking so much, we're going to put you in an ROP after school program which I designated my classes so I can I got out of class at 12 o'clock every day so I can make sure I got to the ROP class in time so I can take care of that and ROP class pretty much just prepares you for college <clears throat> so I got prepared for college. I started doing ROP cooking, which uh, one day out of the week they opened the... Oh, I don't like that bead. I'm taking that off. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it was all Willy Wonka. I didn't like it. <clears throat> so she put me in R.O.P. cooking classes. That's when I started baking more. And my teacher thought I was brilliant. Which, I, 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 was, I was just being myself. That's where I came up with the Santa Cruz sandwich. I don't know if you guys watched that video yet. Oh shoot, I dropped it. Uh, if I remember, I will put it up in the eye. So, uh, I have a hard time remembering things though. But if I remember, I'll put it in the eye. So you guys can go back and watch it if you haven't watched it. So, I did four years of ROP class uh restaurant class and i also my senior year i took a restaurant class at the college which was pre-qualification for culinary arts and my teacher at the college was just like i want you to come work for me in my restaurant and i was like really and he's like yeah really you're you're how old and i said i'm 17 and he said yeah you're gonna be top dog one of these days 
And I was just like, yeah, okay, whatever. I don't consider myself to be a, a, a good, like, tremendous cook or anything. <clears throat> well, I turned about to be a good cook. So he accepted me into the culinary arts program to be his teacher's aide. And there was... Uh, <clears throat> people in that class that have been taking that class for two years already. And they were pissed because some new kid coming into the class was the teacher's pet or teacher's aide. <clears throat> and then that's when my passion for baking really took off. Because my teacher found out that I was really good at baking. And he found out I was really good at baking because one day he came up to me and he goes, Hey, <clears throat> because what happens in the ROP, uh, well not ROP, the uh, culinary arts, is each week a student rotates a shift. So I would be a server one week, I would be a, a waiter the next week, I would be the maitre d', I would be a busboy, I'd be a line cook, I'd be the uh, grill cook, I'd be a salad cook, uh, <clears throat> or I would be the, uh, my favorite job of all, trap! Good lord. My favorite job of all was the, uh, shoot, what do you call that guy? He was the one that stood up in front of the line when they were cooking and when the plate come out. He gave the approval to send the plate to the customer. <clears throat> that was my favorite job because I like telling my people I worked with to send it back. But I was just being a jerk. <clears throat> so he asked me one day, he's like, hey, I know you did baking last week, but... The other guy that's supposed to do it this week told me he don't want to do it no more because he got uh, a little upset because he did the baking the week before with me and I told him what to do. And I was like, well, you know, life goes on. He was doing it wrong compared to how I would do it. So I told him how to do it. Well, I got stuck on baking after that for, like, forever. Which didn't bother me none. I loved it. Come on. Get over there. Get in place. Oh, wait. Oops. I don't have all the beads. Oh, shoot. Okay, I'm back. I kept... I keep... Missing... A bead. For some reason. Not paying attention to the beads that I'm picking up. So, now we got two and two. Now I need to go one, two, three, four, five teals. So, I started doing more cooking, baking, all of that goodness. I My teacher had me go work in his bakery for quite a while. And then when I grew out of that, because... People were getting pissed off at me because I was telling them how they were supposed to bake and how they weren't supposed to bake. People don't like that, but I like telling people what to do. Oh, you shush it over there. And then I got to the point where... I got a job offer to work in a bakery for uh, 
they call it a holiday market, which is a little family ran grocery store in my town. And they were opening a brand spanking new store. And they hired me to run that new store. And that store was perfect for six months. And then they asked me to move to a different store because there was a store that they had that was falling apart. And they, well, the bakery was. And they wanted to send me down there to see if I can straighten it out. And I did. And I straightened it up pretty good. I put a request in to go back to the new store. And they denied me. They said I needed to stay at the store I was at. Because I was doing such a good job. Which really pissed me off. Because I, I started that new store. And... Wasn't fair that they gave it to somebody else. Anyways, so I went to work one day because I was in the process of training a new, um, a new baker at the time. So she would work certain mornings and I would work the other mornings. Oops, I forgot a beat again. Dang it. So, I would work some afternoons. She would work some mornings. Jeez, boo. Just throw yourself on the ground back there. And then I, I messed up. I didn't need that other bead. Jeez, I'm... I'm squirreling away over here at this tonight. I hope I have enough thread to make it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to tie on. So anyways, I got to work one day. My mom needed the truck because she had some errands to go do. So she said, I'll take you and drop you off. And then I'll come back and pick you up later. And I was like... Cool, it's fine. Okay, I need one more just like that. So, she gets there and she's like, well, I'm going to do some grocery shop. Because it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon. She's like, I'm just going to do some grocery shopping while I'm here. What are you going to eat for lunch? And I was like, oh, I'll just buy a sandwich. And she's like, well, go have them ring it up. And I'll pay for it while I'm here. And give you the receipt. And you can just get it on your lunch break. And I was like, okay, yeah, I could do that. So I go over to the bakery. I tell the lady to give me a... It was my bakery manager. I said, I want to buy a sandwich, but I'm not going to eat it until lunch. Can you do that? And she's like, yeah, I could do that. So I at lunch, I go tell my bakery manager I need this sandwich made and she's like yeah not a problem so she makes it and I go into the back break room and my manager's in the back break room waiting for me the store manager and I'm like um can I help you with something and he's like yeah I want to know how you're going to pay for that sandwich because you just stole it. And I said, I beg your pardon? And he said, you just stole that sandwich. Don't uh, beg your pardon me. I said, I did not steal this sandwich. My mom... One, two, three, four... Eight. I cannot count these teeny tiny lines... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I said, no, my mom was just here. And when she dropped me off and she bought the sandwich, here's my receipt. And he was like, nope, I ain't playing this. You stole that sandwich. You're fired. Get out of here. 
and so I call the store manager or the uh, district manager and I said yo look at this isn't even right Shoot, I need one more I said this isn't even right I paid for the sandwich when my mom picked me up or when my dro mom dropped me off blah 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 and he was like Okay, I can't believe I just dropped all those. I had to take a break for a second and go scream bloody murder at the top of my lungs. Plus, I added on part of this, a new part of the thread because I didn't have enough to work the needle. I hope this knot will go through everything good. Oh yeah. Perfect doll. Oh. You ain't even gonna see the knot when it's done. Okay. We're back on track. Enough getting aggravated over here. So now we need two yellows. So yeah, like my cooking career was kind of all over the place in in a way um i did more i did more baking than i did anything uh five i've worked at five or six different bakeries in my time of baking um, and most of them I got fired from because I like telling people what to do too much. And if they're not doing it how I want them to do it, then I, I tell them they're doing it wrong. Can I really... I like to twist it like that. It seems to help it stay on the needle. Anyways. So, soon after I quit working at the bakeries, I took a job as a chef again. And I hated being a chef because... So, one of the questions... And one of the tags that was going down in the, the Diamond Painting Marathon was, would you rather have a live-in chef or a live-in cook? Well, the difference between a chef and a cook is, is a cook don't have no experience. A chef has experience. So, I don't know, I just had to point that out. Oh, my knot's gonna stick off right to the side. Don't like that. Let me see if I can cut it off some more. I really just need to quit. I always say if I have hair, I pull my hair out, but I have hair. Okay. I had to walk away. There was too many things happening. I went and pulled my hair out for a while. Screamed bloody murder at the top of my lungs. Man. Today has not been the day, let me tell you. But we're going to get back into it and not let it get to you. Don't let it get to you. It's not worth it. That's why I, I hit the pause button and I walked away. Went and did a couple other things and came back. 
Yeah, I, I did get pissed off, and I did yell, and I did start to pull my hair out, and then it hurt, so, oh, shoot. See, I'm not paying attention. I'm not holding my diamonds, my beads. <sighs> Tell you what. Stress level has been through the roof the last few days. <sighs> I just need to breathe. Take some time and breathe. Anyways. So, I worked in multiple different restaurants and bakeries, like I was saying. My favorite job of all time was working in bakeries because I was... My passion was for baking. Alright, we're almost done with this project, you guys. I don't want that. I want this. I want you to turn your sideways. Yes, there we go. Okay, so now I need four of you. Whoa, squirrely, squirrely, squirrely. One of you. And then four of you again. Oh, I don't want that. That one's funky. So, on an exciting note, I did order some more beads this week. So I can get to making some more Native American projects. Um, I'll show you guys the colors that I got. Uh, my plan is... Is to uh, people keep asking me if I'm going to be selling these pro these bracelets? I I don't think I'm going to be selling them because it takes me a while to make them. But get in there. I am going to be making some changes to my Patreon. And I will be making these bracelets and sending them to my Patreons that I already have. Right now I have two Patreons. WW and Anxiety Art. And not Anxiety Art. Um, Diamond Painting with Anxiety. Gosh, I just about screwed that up. And then... So I will be adding... On to that, and making some changes, getting things together for that. I got two more rows to do, and we are done. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we can do. Shoot, I keep. Dropping it and not holding to the hook. Or I keep holding it by the needle and forgetting the weight of the beads are heavy. See? I I am I'm just not having a very good day, that's all there is to it. Not my day. Just not my day. So... We are almost done. Ooh. 
What, booger butt? So, did you guys like the intro that I did for the Christmas cook, uh, Christmas dinner? Where you guys got to see Trapper and I just talked and told you what was going down. Some people said they liked that. I may end up do more intros like that. Oh, come on. This needle is so tiny. Or this eye. So I may, I, I may do some more like that. I'm not sure. Yet. I have to wait to see what you guys think. But after all of my cooking and baking experiences, let's see, I got three, six, seven, eight, and nine. I, I pretty much gave up on cooking for a while. Because it was just, it was real royally, no, you guys can't even see. It was royally pissing me off. I, I'm not really good at being told what to do. It's, it's one of those things. I just, I'm not good at it. And being a line cook, you have to be told what to do by the other, the other cooks in charge. And I went back to being a cook after I worked my baking job. And it was just a wrong, wrong, wrong mistake for me. Because it was something I did not like to do. So soon after that, I quit. So that is... The end of our piece. Now we begin to tie it off, which I do a simple eye tie. Well, not an eye tie, but a simple loop through. Come on. There you go. So what I like to do is I'm I pull it through like that and then I put it through that loop two times. And then do uh, what they call a surgical knot. Just pulling it tight. And then take some super new glue. And just put a dab right there. Because this stuff is so liquidy. Make sure everything is still nice and straight. And then, as you see, the, the beads down here are a little a little loose and spread out. So, I want to make sure you get those nice and tight. We could fix that up here in just a second. Okay. So, I'm going to get rid of these magnets and this needle. over there and I'm going to take move you guys down a little bit into the business so you can see what's going on so I'm going to take these first two strands over here cut them off
and tie them together two loops And a dab of super new glue because this stuff is like craziness over here. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't have done that because I learned a new technique the other day watching some YouTube videos on Native American beading. And I already cut, I already cut this off, so, shoot. Oh well, I'll just do it the way I no normally know how to do it. So that off to the side. Two hoops. They call this like a doctor's knot or something. Alright, I gotta readjust you guys so you can see a little bit better. Stand up there. So, after working at multiple different restaurants and bakeries, I pretty much gave up on working in a restaurant or a bakery because I was just fed up with the crap. After two and a half years of going through culinary arts to become a chef or a baker or whatever I was becoming, just the stress level on a day with day was was too much for me to handle. So I took a break. I was in between jobs, and my cousin called me one day and says. You want to come work? And I was like, yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. And he said, cool. So I showed up at the print shop I work at right now. And I haven't looked back. It's been a... It's been nothing but joy working at a print shop. I got to work with my cousin and some friends. The next time I do this Native American beading tutorial, I'll show you guys how to do this the correct way because this is how I've always done it. But then I, I, uh, I seen a better way to do this the other day, and I was like, oh man, I need to try that. And then I completely forgot. I just want the two middle ones, please. It's 
So the next one I do, I'll show you guys the appropriate way of doing this. This is just how I've always done it. Out of here. Out of here. Okay. Now, make sure you guys are seeing this. That ring light's a pain in my neck. Same thing on this side. This is the most crucial part of everything because you don't want it coming apart. And I know it's probably boring to sit here and watch me fight with this, but I will go ahead and pause it and finish this out. So you guys don't have to sit here and watch me do this the whole time. Okay, so once you got them all tied up in knots, like so, what I like to do is grab all of the wire or threads and give it a nice little twist, like so, and then put a dab of glue on the threads so it stays like that. It made that hard, which that's what you want. So, let's put this glue up before I spill it. Now, I like to take this and snip it off like that. So you have some tail sticking out. And then we will take our leather. What side do I want out? I like the pattern of that side out. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut. Let's see how I almost cars started cutting it without seeing how wide it is. Um, I'm gonna go about right there. These snips don't want to cut this leather. I don't know where my scissors are. I bought these snips just for snipping leather. Alright, got it. So y'all want a piece about like that long. Basically fold it like that. And then cut it in half.
Now this is the toughest leather. Okay, I found my scissors. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to take this piece of leather and hold it in half. And then fold it in half again. And snip that corner. So you got a little hole. Half. And then in half. That one's a bigger hole, but that's okay. So we got our two pieces. Now we're going to take some of this. Suede lace, and we're gonna take. Oh, let's see. How long did I make this one? I'm gonna use about the same amount. See, I made this one already. Two of those. That out of the way. Now you're going to take this and tie it into a knot. The tightest knot you can get. Like so. And then you're going to take super new glue and put super new glue on these knots. That way they don't come out on you. Trap. Stop. Jeez Louise. Like so, and then take super new glue. I'm just going to put a couple dabs. Turns this, uh. It almost turns it a blue color. A couple dabs just to make sure it doesn't come apart. And then we're going to take this and put it through here. Have it come out. Like so. And then, let's move this one off to the side. So, then you're just going to take this, and you're going to lay it and bring it down to the business. <coughs> lay it inside of there. Make sure, my hand's in the way to you guys, but I just want to make sure it's enough to lay flat inside of there. I just like using a couple dabs back over the top and just push it down. may have to take some of the new glue just close the ends up without super gluing your fingers together of course. Let's 
put some pressure on it, make sure it's nice and stuck. Make sure it don't stick on your table. Okay, there's one side. Now I'll repeat the process on the other side. Make sure it's glued good and it's going to stick. Sometimes this leather does not like to stick very well. So yeah, my cooking career was a whole lot of, like, f about five years once I graduated high school. And then I went into printing, and I haven't looked back. I've been into printing for 20 years. And there you have it. That is your Native American bracelet. I would normally take a bigger bead and take these. Let me get you guys up out of the business so you can see what I'm talking about. I would run a bigger bead onto this and then slide it through the two of them and then tie knots to each end so it's like a slip knot. But that's your completed piece. I think it turned out nice. Oh, I can't tie it on my hand. This one actually fits me a lot better than the other ones do. Because the pattern was bigger. The pattern on those other ones were a lot smaller. And that's all she wrote, folks. Sorry, I was so, uh, like, 
frizzled brain today, but I just... A lot of crap. Lots of crap. But... It's done and over with. I don't care to speak about it no more on my channel. And from this day forward, I will no longer bring trash to my channel. So I hope everybody enjoyed. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. If you would like in the future to become a Patreon, you would get one of these bracelets. Maybe not like this. Maybe in a pattern like this. This is another one I made. And this is another one I made. Basically the same patterns. I changed colors. Uh, this one uses a barrel clasp with a hook. Not really a fan of the barrel clasp and hook. I like the natural look. With the leathers. And yeah. The one that I do plan on making in the near future. Is probably going to be a three phase video. Because. That's the pattern. And I may here soon figure out how to do a voiceover. So I can just sit down and record this video or doing this and not worry about talking. And then when I do the voiceover, I could, you know, talk about what I need to talk about. But once again, that is the piece. Nice and complete. Looks good. Um, I have it on my wrist this way. That way, if you're looking at it. You would see the bird. But yeah. Uh, once I get these beads for this. I'll show you guys how to do that. So the next video. Will be again. And. I'll probably start the next video. In a couple of weeks. A week or two. I gotta figure out how to do this. This. Oops. I'm probably bumping you guys. I gotta figure out how to do this. Because this is. What does it say on here? One inch wide. Whew, that, that glue stinks. Six colors. Fire line or super line. Seed beads. Height 7.25 inches. Or so the length. Oh wow, that's gonna be a long one. Wide. It's one inch wide, so this is probably. Uh, I'd say. So this looks like it's about three quarters of an inch, roughly, maybe a hair under. So this one will be, okay, well, let's, let's measure how long this one is. Cause that pattern just looks huge. That's four and a half. This one says it's seven. Good lord, I'm gonna have to make a choker out of that. And uh, let's see. So if my loom, how long is my loom? It's only seven inches. So I have to start it way back here and rotate the loom to keep adding to it. Ah, I might find another pattern to do next because this one's going to take some time. This one was a nice easy one to, to, to.
to complete for video purposes. So, that's all for today, folks. I'm sorry I've been so scatterbrained and so... <sighs> yeah, I've been all over the place. So, I hope you all have a fantastic day. And as always, remember peace, love, and treat each other with respect. And I hope you all have a fantabulous one. <laughs>